From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Cassidy Powers here at the Bozeman Public Safety Center and stay tuned because I'm talking to local law enforcement about how they take no days off, not even Labor Day. Netanyahu asks for forgiveness but sticks with a key demand after Israeli hostages were found dead in Gaza. I'm Jared Hill with President Biden's response as pressure grows for a ceasefire hostage deal. I'm Megan Thompson here at the annual Labor Day picnic here at Stodden Park in Butte. Coming right up, I'll speak with some of the people who are part of the unions here and the organizer of this event that has a long history in the mining city. Ooh, oh, good solid, shot. Solid toss in the game of cornhole. Harder game than you might think, Matt. Is it? Cornhole? Have you never played cornhole? Uh, not competitively. Well, I don't competitively do it either, I don't but know. I yeah, get competitive. I think it's fun. <laughs> I get competitive when I do it. I think I it's it. fun. I just stink at it. That's I'm not the too problem. good. I need, we should set up a thing in. Okay, that we'll talk about that later. Yeah, don't tell management. No, we'll just set up a little game in here. <laughs> don't know what's going on. No, they're fine. They don't need to know. Well, what is why have KBZK and KXLF. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we get John Amy involved. There we go. Oh, oh it could be dangerous. <laughs> Weather-wise, not a bad day for cornhole, but maybe cornhole inside, like we're talking uh, yeah. about. <laughs> uh, I think it depends on the time. Yeah. Uh, the afternoon, we are looking at the potential of some thunder showers. The morning temperatures are great. 50s and 60s, a little warmer than we like to see at this point, but I don't think our temperatures are going to warm up dramatically. We have had a few light rain showers trying to work their way across the area. Really not much to those. Isolated thunder showers initially, and then we'll see a little more widespread potential as you get into the afternoon. A few of those will pack uh, heavy rain and the potential of some gusty winds. And again, that's early to mid part of the afternoon may linger into the evening in some cases, but man, it is gorgeous out this morning. We're going to talk more about what your day holds for you in the weather world. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Well, a 36 year old Arkansas woman is dead after a crash on Saturday afternoon just outside of Anaconda. According to the Montana Highway Patrol, the woman was driving eastbound on Montana Highway 48 when she lost control of the vehicle on a right hand curve near mile marker two. The car then slid and overturned, eventually stopping about 30 yards away. The woman was transported to Community Hospital of Anaconda, where she later died. MHP believes that speed and drugs were a factor in the crash. The woman's identity has not yet been released. And COVID-19 cases have gone up over the summer in Gallatin County. And our Megan Elaine spoke with a Walmart pharmacist to see how they have started testing and treating the community as COVID numbers spike and cold season is fast approaching. Recently, Walmarts across Montana have rolled out new patient testing and treatment. But what does this mean specifically for Gallatin County? When I'm looking at it from the community perspective, customer perspective, people are really busy now. And so, um, you know, with us being open seven days a week, it just seems to be kind of an easier, more convenient way to get in. Pharmacy manager Lane Meeks has been working as a pharmacist for nearly 30 years. He's excited for Walmart's new treatment offerings. The service is called testing and treatment, and it allows Walmart pharmacists test customers for flu, strep, and COVID-19. They also prescribe the proper treatment. Treatments that we do are strep, um, and we can prescribe an antibiotic if it's appropriate. We can do flu um, and prescribe Tamiflu if appropriate, and also COVID, and uh, prescribe packs of it if it's appropriate. The services will be welcomed as COVID-19 cases rise in Gallatin County and Montana over the summer. As of August 27th, there were reported 80 cases across the county, which is a 233% increase from June 1st, when there were only 24 reported cases in the county. Meeks can attest to this spike. I know in July, we, <laughs> we were inundated. It seems like, just in my experience, it seems like it's getting better than when a, in July seemed to be quite a peak there. An updated COVID-19 vaccine has been released with a new formula intended to protect against currently circulating strains of the virus. The vaccine is expected to be available by the end of the month. According to the Center for Disease and Control Prevention, people with health problems should get the updated COVID-19 vaccine. According to Healthcare IT News, 55 out of the 56 counties in Montana are designated as health professional shortage areas with limited access to urgent and routine medical visits. Meeks is 
just excited to get the word out there. Not a lot of people know about it, so uh, it's just kind of word of mouth right now. This new service is available at all 14 Walmarts in Montana. For more information on COVID-19 and Walmart's testing and treatment service, visit our website. In Bozeman, Megan Elaine. MTN News. And most people probably just got done enjoying a long three day weekend. But while you had some time off, did you think about those who maybe didn't have the time off? Our Cassidy Powers met up with the Bozeman Police and Fire to talk about the toll it takes to work 365 days a year. Most Americans look forward to the first week of September because they get to enjoy a long three day weekend. But have you ever thought about those who don't get Labor Day off or any holiday for that matter? We work 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I met up with Gary O'Brien, a captain with Bozeman Fire. He's currently on day two of his 48 hour shift, which also so happens to be Labor Day. If you had today off, what would you be doing? Today I'd be um, barbecuing with the family on the river, maybe getting our rifles sighted in or our bows sighted in for the upcoming hunting season. But Captain O'Brien doesn't have today off. We understand what we're getting into when we sign up, but like many other things, we adjust. We adjust with our, uh, our family life and our, our personal life so we can come in and serve the city and the guests of Bozeman. And Bozeman Fire isn't the only one working holidays. Brett Logan is a patrol sergeant with Bozeman Police. I caught up with him in the middle of his 14 hour shift this Labor Day. How do you feel about that? It doesn't bother me. I know what I got into. The hard part is with families. They, they sometimes don't understand um, why we're continuously working on weekends, holidays, especially our, our small children. It takes them a while to kind of understand why dad's away. Sergeant Logan tells me if he had today off, like most of the nation, he'd be out recreating with his family. But he also knows the city never sleeps. We all sign up for knowing that likely at some point in your career you're going to work nights, weekends, holidays, but it's, it's a drive to do better for the community. And although Labor Day tends to mark the end of summer, this year was a smoky one. So Bozeman Fire wants to remind everyone. People are still camping, people are still recreating, but the weather doesn't stop, right? So there is today, for instance, a red flag warning. So we just like to remind people to keep safety in mind because stuff happens quick. In Bozeman, Cassidy Powers, MTN News. And pressure is mounting in Israel for a ceasefire and hostage release deal. Just days after the bodies of six hostages, including one Israeli American, were recovered from Gaza. The hostages were taken when Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th. Yesterday, President Biden told reporters that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is not doing enough to reach an agreement. Netanyahu called out Mr. Biden by name as he defiantly called on the international community to direct their pressure at Hamas. CBS News' Jared Hill has more from New York. A third day of furious protests in Jerusalem as thousands demanded Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reach a ceasefire and hostage release deal. A court is forcing workers in Israel's largest union back on the job today after striking Monday caused industries to grind to a halt. The U.S. is also turning up the heat on the Israeli Prime Minister. Do you think he's doing enough? No. Yesterday, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris met with their hostage negotiation team, with President Biden adding he plans to speak to Netanyahu eventually. At a news conference, Netanyahu asked for forgiveness for not bringing the hostages back alive, and he forcefully pushed back on mounting pressure. We're asked to make concessions? What message does this send Hamas? It says... Kill more hostages. The pressure internationally must be directed at these killers, at Hamas, not at Israel. <laughs> Thousands gathered in Jerusalem Monday for the funeral of Hirsch Goldberg Poland, the lone American out of six hostages found dead over the weekend. Okay, sweet boy, go now on your journey. Finally, my sweet boy, finally, 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 finally you're free. <laughs> Meanwhile, nearly 50 Palestinians killed this week alone, according to health officials, as strikes in Gaza and raids in the West Bank continue, with Netanyahu vowing that Hamas will pay a heavy price. Jared Hill, CBS News. And yesterday, the United Kingdom said it would suspend some weapons exports to Israel over concerns they could violate international humanitarian law. Though the country stressed this is not a blanket ban, the UK sends a very small number of weapons to Israel compared to other countries, such as the United States. Now, back in the United States, Labor Day traditionally begins the final sprint until Election Day with debates, rallies and swing state polls taking center stage. 
But as our Joe St. George reports, this month is also about the return of former President Trump's legal cases with a key hearing this week and a possible sentence in his New York City felony conviction later this month. Between an assassination attempt, President Biden's decision to step aside and Vice President Harris's historic nomination, it's easy to lose track of all of the legal issues still facing former President Trump. But those court battles will be back in the headlines soon. Let's start with a quick look at former President Trump's legal calendar in September. This Thursday is when a status hearing in Trump's January 6th case takes place in Washington. That case and Trump's alleged role on January 6th has essentially been on hold since the Supreme Court issued an opinion earlier this year that presidents are entitled to some level of immunity. Thursday's hearing will address lingering questions like what charges can remain and perhaps a new trial date will be set. Avajoy Burnett is Scripps News' legal affairs correspondent and will cover the hearing. It will now be up to that judge to determine how this case could potentially move forward. They will have the burden to figure out what is covered under presidential immunity and what is not covered. If the case moves forward and Trump loses this election, it could potentially put the former president in another precarious legal position next year. If Trump wins in November, though. If former President Donald Trump actually wins, it's very likely that he will tell whoever he appoints at the DOJ to get rid of this case altogether. Let's move the calendar to September 16th. That is when we expect the New York City judge overseeing Trump's felony convictions to rule whether those convictions can still stand in the wake of that Supreme Court immunity ruling. But first, an even bigger ruling may occur. Last week, Trump's legal team made a new request to move the entire case to federal court. The court on Friday rejected that on technical grounds. Another request is expected soon. It's a much stronger case now than it was last year when he tried to remove it because the Supreme Court has said that there is this sort of, you know, protection. If Trump loses that request and Judge Juan Mershon says the conviction stands, then all eyes will be on September 18th when Trump is scheduled to be sentenced. The maximum for any felony is one and a third to four years um, in state prison. The minimum is, is nothing. There's no mandatory minimum. In the past, court appearances by the former president have rallied his base. Time will tell if that will happen again so close to Election Day. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. And Butte's labor unions carry a long tradition of celebrating the achievements of the middle class workers across America with the annual Labor Day picnic. Armigan Thompson has the sights and sounds from that annual picnic. Well, it's the annual Labor Day picnic here in Butte in a place that many consider to be the Gibraltar of labor. And today, there's many different kinds of unions represented here at this annual picnic. It's a labor of love to do this kind of stuff for me. So I enjoy it. It's just a thank you for all the labor. Most everybody out here is a union people, you know, and they know what it means to be on strike and, and stand up in solidarity for your fellow worker. Mike Boisa is a retired carpenter, but he's not retired from the union. Well, the union doesn't leave you. We lost Mick Wanakot, um unexpectedly, and um, he would be here with us today. We know he's here in spirit. Um, we wanted to dedicate the Labor Day picnic in Mick's honor this year. year. It's important we recognize Labor Day, especially in Butte, Montana. We have a long history of the labor movement here, from the mines, to teachers unions, uh, public sector, private sector employees. So we're the Gibraltar of labor here, right here in Butte, Montana. We got one on the board. You know, the middle class, America is in dire straits. By the time the picnic wraps up, Mike believes he will have grilled about 500 hot dogs. What's the trick to feeding a lot of people? A lot of food. <laughs> that one's pretty close. <laughs> and, a, and a willing cook. I don't know how willing I am, but here we are. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. Well, I think that's a girl that Mr. Chestnut would have a field day with. A lot of, that's a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> that definitely is. Now, before we take a break, it is 614 right now. I'm going to show you a rare talent. It's one okay. thing to be just athletic, but it's another thing to also be a great actor. Okay. Now I'm going to take us to this Madison Charlotte football Ooh. game. You can see a guy gets pushed oh, down. Whoa, man, whoa, whoa. That was power. Whoa, whoa. 
Oh, Wait, okay? oh, oh he's not okay. Oh, oh he's going to get reset. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness. Okay. Thank goodness his buddy was there to really help him uh, out. I think they're giving him a hard time there a oh, little. Of, yep. of course oh, he is. Oh, man. I mean, oh. just do a couple somersaults in there. He sold it, though. Number 79 was on top of his buddy, not letting him go a second without some support. And the Emmy goes to? Mr. Barnett. Yep, there you go. <laughs> now, both of those players, they did get unsportsmanlike uh, conduct flags. They, flags, should. You know, they but, should. But it's still kind of of fun. It <laughs> it's a little fun. Nobody got seriously hurt. I think you get a little chippy on the fall on the football field, right? I think so. And you know, who knows? We might have a, an Oscar-worthy performance here yep. pretty soon. So watch out for the nominations coming out. There you go. <laughs> All right, quick break coming your way. When we come back, though, man's gonna have a look at your forecast. Top stories coming your way, and Chet Lehman is gonna have a look over at Mallard's Rest. This is the new access road to the Mallard's Rest Fishing Access Site in the Paradise Valley. You used to come in clear up there by those trees. I'm Chet Lehman. Coming up, we talk with Fish, Wildlife and Parks about the reality of the fact that the historic flooding on the Yellowstone River two years ago has made this safer and easier access road actually possible.